Hey guys, this is Chris Schwartz Edmiston with Schwartz Edmiston Website Design. I wanted to create this tutorial today to go over split layouts in Squarespace. I saw this question posted in the custom CSS resource group, so I want to take a moment to answer it because I think I have the best solution out of all of the solutions that I've seen presented. So let's just jump right in. First thing we have to do is add a section specifically for the split layout design. So I'm just going to call it split layout. The first thing that we want to do is add an image card, image layout. Go ahead and add your image and add your title and add your copy. And then I'll add my title, which is just going to be uh, cool since I'm using my fictional web or uh, bridge repair company. It's gonna be a lot of bridge theme stuff going on. I'll just see our process. Okay. And Squarespace drops in a default like text block. So you just want to delete that because the only block that you want to have in this section is the image card block. So go ahead and save that. I'm going to drag it above my index CTA because I think that'll look better for my design. I want people to see the split layout and then have the call to action at the bottom of the page. That's just better UX design. Okay, so how do we actually make this full width? We're gonna have to add custom CSS, so go to design custom CSS. And the first thing that we want to do is target our split layout section. So Every time you name a new index section, it creates a section ID called whatever you named the section. So for example, I named mine split layout, so it creates a section ID of split layout. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna target that, open up some curly brackets, and within that we're going to want to target the index page content class because that's what gives index pages their padding. So you can see when I hover over index page content here that all of that green lights up and that's the padding being created on the index page. So all we have to do is target that class by putting a dot and then capital index dash page dash content and now we're going to open up some more curly brackets and we're going to want to set the padding to zero pixels. Cool. So now that looks pretty good. Um, it's now jumping. Oh, it's not even taking up the full width of the browser. Um, and so one thing we have to do is add a max width of 100%. And now we should see it jump to, what, yep, cool. So now it's spanning the full width of the browser. Sometimes within the theme settings, the theme will set a limit on how wide the index page sections can go. So if you, just by setting that max width to 100%, we were able to override that setting. Okay, so now within the index page content, you can see that it's spanning the full width of the section, but if I go to inspect element, it's not spanning the full height of the section because the image block itself has um, a little bit of padding at the bottom. You can see that the little green line when I hover over the image block. So we just have to get rid of that. So all we're going to do is go dot SQS block. And we're going to open up more curly brackets and we're going to say padding zero. So now that gets rid of all the padding on the image block. So now we're spanning the full width and the full height of the section. You may be thinking, awesome, we're good to go, we're done. It's actually not the case. So you'll notice as I go into tablet mode, as the screen scales down, this image is gonna wanna keep its aspect ratio. And so it's no longer gonna span the full height of the section, which breaks the design that we're going for. So you can see the image should be going to the bottom here, but it's not. So we have to override that. What we have to do is target whatever 
class is making the image not be 100%, we have to override that and make it 100%. So we can see, okay, our image block is taking up the full width. This intrinsic class is, class is taking up, or the full height, excuse me. And this image inset and content fit, these classes are not spanning 100% of the height. So we have to target those classes and set their height to 100%. So we're gonna go dot image inset dot content fit. So this is saying, okay, target the div that has the class dot image inset and the class dot content fit. And we're just gonna put its height to 100%. So now you can see the dark gray jump down. So you can see it's trying to take up the full height but the image itself is still maintaining that aspect ratio. So what can we do about that? Well, let's jump in to inspect element again. So all we have to do is target the image within this image block. So I'm gonna target dot design layout card. That class, and within that class, I'm gonna target the image itself. And I'm going to say, okay, I want this height to be 100%. And we actually, we, we probably have to put it important to override it. Cool. So now the image is spanning 100%, no matter what screen size we're on. But it looks pretty bad because it's actually just stretching the image. So if we go into like a really small screen size, you can see, yeah, it's no longer having that problem where it doesn't take up the full height, but now the image itself is getting really stretched and it doesn't look very good. So the next step took me so long to figure out. I was going through all sorts of Google searches to figure out something to solve this. And finally, I found a breakthrough. So I want to share it with you guys. And the breakthrough is a style called object fit. And what the object fit does, it's a way to give the image different styles that you would be able to give in a background image if you had added the image with CSS. So we can give it the object fit of cover. And what that's going to do is no matter how we resize this, it's always going to cover that area without actually distorting the image. So you can see now it's not stretching or anything. So I have found that that's the best way to do this split style layout. There is another way using Flexbox where you can actually get index sections next to each other. And I'll probably make a tutorial about that too, uh, because that's handy for doing more advanced designs outside of just like title, description, and call to action button. So I will make a tutorial about that. But for now, uh, this should help most of you guys. One other thing, there's a vendor prefix that you have to add. It's just O object fit so that um, this shows up on Safari and Opera. So just the best practice to add that O object fit. I'll probably throw up a blog post with the code in it so you guys can just create your split layout, open some curly brackets, and then just paste this code in there. Uh, and it should work for you guys every time. All right, thanks.